Welcome back everybody, Kathy Arbor here, and today is Watercolor Tuesday. So today I thought it would be kind of cute to do a uh, teacup with some four-leaf clovers or clover of some sort for um, St. Patrick's Day. So I've already drawn it out, I'll show you that in a minute. Um, you remember last week we did on Thursday we finished up this um, acrylic painting it's a mixed media one because I did use scrapbook paper as the border and we made up some uh, paper and made actual layers of shingles with paper and and there's some colored pencil in here for the different um, uh, shading areas of the flowers. Uh, this was craft paint, so it's, it's a lot easier to use your colored pencils on these ones here. So if you're interested in that, I will put a link up here in the corner and you'll be able to watch that but you'll have to wait if you're streaming or if you're watching me live right now you'll have to wait till I'm done <laughs> before I can post that uh, I did receive some uh, happy mail from Teresa Peterman she always sends beautiful cards this time it was cute a little uh, pocket and she uh, machines uh, sewed it all the way around the edge that's so cute it also has a separate pocket in here. Little bow bunny tag here. I love this. I think it's so cute. And then a multi-dimensional die cut. Like there's multiple layers to this. There has to be like one, two, three, four, four or five layers to this snowman. And I'm gonna use him in my daily journal and probably use them in maybe in the pocket or I'm going to use this in my daily journal too and um, just glue it in or make it a flip. Thank you um, Teresa that was awesome and today we're going to be doing teacups like stacked teacups. So last week we uh, just did a very loose watercolor um paintings from the book oh gosh gotta leave it out here um don't know if i left it out let's see i don't see it uh, there's actually a, a watercolor book that has watercolor paper in it that you can play with um I'll try and list it down below in uh, the description box when I'm done. So that was fun playing with her step-by-steps and seeing how she goes about layering. And um, then I just used some stamps. This was a, uh, actually a, a letter stencil that I have. And I just traced and then colored in. Um, now, I did use uh, alcohol markers, so it did bleed through, but I'm not worried about that. I cannot just place a piece of paper or put a piece of watercolor, uh, maybe a drawing or something, and just glue it right on top of this page, and it's all good to go. Hey, Dot, good to see you. <laughs> Hope you're having a good day. It's actually snowing here today. We're supposed to have like 14 Celsius tomorrow, but it's only like mm, two or three Celsius right now. But it's it's coming. It's coming. I'm just. It's going to be a roller coaster, I'm sure, of temperatures and um, weather. But spring's here. Hey, Kathleen. Good to see you. So we're going to do this cute little teacup and um, 
I'm just going to put some clovers in it, maybe some bees flying around. And I thought it might be a, um, fun to do some stenciling with watercolor. Or you could also, if you don't have many stencils, you could also use a stamp, uh, like a background stamp, and use that for your cups too. Sunny and 57 degrees in. Oh, really? Awesome. Yeah, tomorrow's supposed to be about that or a little higher. And then I think tomorrow and the next day is going to be plus 14, plus 15. But then it goes back down again. <laughs> a roller coaster. Woo. <laughs> So I thought uh, since St. Patrick's Day is tomorrow, so I would play around with greens, um, yellow maybe. I like putting black with those two colors. It just plays off of each other. And um, put some uh, little bits of... Uh, clover or shamrocks in yeah it's fighting its way march is typically that way even past few years april's been that way too <laughs> back and forth but you just gotta deal with it so this is just sketch sketchbook paper again and i just drew out these a little what four cups on a saucer and these are just areas where I want some shamrocks or, or clovers and then I thought I would put a few shamrocks up here maybe bigger ones so I don't want to do the cups first um, typically when you're doing acrylic you start from the background and work your way forward but with um, watercolor it's best to start forward and work your way back when you're doing this type of um, drawing. Uh, and then uh, you can do your sky and everything last. So I thought I would do some of these uh, cute shamrock things. Let me get my paint out. And I'm just going to spray my palette some clean water. I think you can see that pretty good. And I have some paper towel. And... is going to come off. Nope. I have one of these uh, makeup sponge things. Uh, I may do some designs with stencils instead of drawing it. And then maybe stamps. If you want to do stamps, you could do stamps too. Or you could just do a loose watercolor in each uh, cup with uh, just wetting the area and then throwing in some color and letting it do its own thing. That always looks cool too. It's a lovely day here. The gardener has been, we has been and weeded. Also cut the lawn. Oh, awesome. You were already cutting the lawn. Wow. We can't see our lawn dot. <laughs> I cannot see my lawn yet. <laughs> It's still covered in snow. It's so disappointing. We didn't get a, a January thaw this year. It just stayed. <laughs> so it's been a long winter. All right. So I'm going to use some leaf green, permanent sap green, and maybe some green appetite genuine for my 
um, shamrocks and uh, clover. There's, there's different clover, so, you know, I, I don't have a, um, image for this one. I'm just kind of making it up. So if you want to get a reference, you can. If you're very, um, you want to look precise. Um, a certain way or whatever get a get a reference this is just for fun for me so I'm just gonna make up a few colors of green so I love this sap this uh, leaf green by da Vinci so I'm just gonna put a bunch of that in there Judy, good to see you. Um, some sap green by Windsor Newton. And we'll put it in the second one here. Just and um, hmm. Could do praline green, maybe. Praline green is um, kind of on the grayish side. It's very dark. It's very nice, though. Uh, great for uh, shading um, behind plants type of thing. And maybe some yellow. So I'm going to put some Windsor Newton yellow, I guess. It's a nice yellow. It's a little more cooler. A bit on the green side, I guess you could say. And we'll start with that for our shamrocks and stuff. So I like to start when I'm doing something like this. The teacups are behind the shamrocks and stuff. So I like to uh, put the stuff that's in front out first. So we'll put, um, I would start with, your lighter colors so we can mix them so I'm just gonna put some dabs I'm not gonna be really um, like photorealistic here it's gonna be a very loose application of water color um, on this one and I'm just gonna start with the bottom one first And then I can mix it with some greens. I'm going to just throw some green in there just to mix it up, let it do its own thing. Add some that, oh, this darker one here. I'm going to probably put it behind some of this stuff as a shadowed leaf. So it doesn't look like anything really. Then put, let's see, we'll put some more. And then you can start putting in the shape. So clovers normally have three heart-shaped leaves. Sometimes they have four. Those are the lucky ones. And 
I can remember when we were kids, we would go <laughs> spend hours hunting out those lucky clovers. Do you remember doing that? I do. Okay. And then, so just a few of them have to kind of look like a clover. You don't have to do all of them the same. Now, I'm going to put some actual clover flowers in this one too. And they're kind of a mauvey pink color. So we're going to just make, uh, let's see. I'm just going to take some cobalt blue here. I don't need a whole lot and it's very pale. So a bit of cobalt blue. And then a smidgen of some red of some sort. So this is uh, Quinn Magenta. Maybe a little bit more blue. And then some more water. I want it very, very light. So I'm just going to dot, kind of in a ball shape. doesn't have to be perfect. And I'm going to let it dry. And some of this green is going to mix in there. That doesn't bother me. Uh, let's see. Yeah, that's good enough, I guess. I'll put a few in, in behind here just to show that it's a little deeper. And then I'm going to dry it. How's everyone doing? Are you guys all on spring break or is that later or kids are spring break here this week? Hey Lori, good to see you. We're doing a stack of teacups with some clover and shamrocks. So I'm just putting the, the ones on top first. All right. So now I'm going to be doing pen. So that's what it looks like to start with. So now I can take a smaller, um, deep, more of a detailed brush, if you have one, and put some stems in. And I want them a little bit on the darker side. So I'm going to mix some of that uh, greens that I have. And just make kind of a medium green color. And I like to hold my uh, brush closer to the end and then have it straight down pointing. You, you have a little bit more control when you do that. And I'm just going to mix the colors so that they're not all the same. Make sure you have enough water on your brush too because you want it to flow off fairly easily. Darken it, have lighter ones, smaller ones. Um, like that. Then I have to decide what kind of teacup I want. So I think I'm going to make this the bottom plate. Um, 
probably a white or cream one because this is cream paper so i'm not going to really put a lot of color in it but uh, to show that it's actual white or cream you do still need to put shadows in so um maybe we'll put we could put some a rim on it too that's maybe black or gold And then I'm going to do the insides of these cups with different patterns. So let's see. We'll do some. Um, I want to make a gray. So here's burnt umber. And I want some ultramarine blue with that umber and it'll give you a nice gray you can play with it a bit sometimes if you mix more blue to it it'll turn more into a, a cool gray or more umber will be a more warm gray so we'll put a little bit of shading so there'll be shading right along the edge here so we'll do some of that here and right in here make this a little bit grayer and i'm going to make the area in between some of these gray just to darken that area up a little bit because it wouldn't be that bright white and i can take it before it dries now this is sketchbook paper so it's not going to be as easy to move but this one moves a little bit so I'm, I'm still happy with that and let's see maybe there's the edge here Uh, we'll make it a little bit shadow there. It's very light. Maybe a little bit here. Come down. But I want to leave a little white space there. Same with this, the um, handle. It can be a little darker. And there's a little rim that I put there. I'm going to make it a little bit darker underneath here at the bottom of the cup. Like that. Okay. And then I'm going to go to this one. And I think think I think I'm gonna make that one um, kind of a yellow but I want a warmer yellow so I'm gonna take this uh, Henza yellow it's a little bit warmer and if you want to make it warmer yet you can add a little bit of brown to it I think I'm going to keep it that yellow for now. Actually, I think I'll, yellow spreads very easily. So I'm just going to wet my page here. And now I can take some of that yellow that I mixed up and I'm 
just going to do a little bit darker along the bottom here. I'm just touching because this yellow moves quite easily. So just a little bit there, just a smidge. I'm going to let it um, do its thing. <laughs> Uh, this one here and this one, I think I will do um, probably with some kind of design with stencil. But I want to put some shamrocks in here. So I'm going to take some of these greens now and mix them. And I'm just going to... Shamrocks are funny shape. Here, I'll show you. Um, they're not like a clover necessarily. When they're, uh, let's see, when they're, uh, I'm going to find a piece of paper. Oh, my God. I think I have paper on here. Okay. When you see shamrocks. They come up like this, and then they curl round, and then they have these, their um, leaves are kind of folded like this. They're quite different. Some of them are open, but they, they kind of... Um, Kind of look like umbrellas. Like that. They, they kind of lightly droop down a bit. So let's make some of those. And shamrocks actually have a uh, flower, white flower that's very similar to that shape also, but it stands up instead. So we'll put a few in here. So and I'm just gonna make some loose ones here. I'm going to go over top of my cup a little bit. That. You might see some that are flat, but there's no, usually you see them in their I don't know if it's a, just a morning thing. It could be when the sun's not hitting them yet. They're a little less perky looking. So some triangles. Maybe we'll put some flowers in that one. Mm. A little bit of darker color now. Then we can go in here and just touch some of the centers. Sometimes they're a little darker in the center. Do that. Like that. Just play with it. This is your time to play with sketchbook work. Don't get um, snag down because you're scared to put some paint down. Just play with it. 
Yeah, they're different. Okay, we'll let that dry because I don't want it mixing. And then we'll get some stencils out. And I, this is a stencil that um, Xandra gave me. And it's perfect for the top part of a teacup, I think. Now you could use stamps too if you want. I like these. Um, these are from Studio Light. And I like them because there's a positive and negative. So I thought that was kind of cool. So if you want the white showing, um, you use this one as the white would be the design. So let's try this one here. And line it up way. Now I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some tape. Some washi tape. Let's dry this first. So. And I'm going to put that wash tape around the edges where I don't want. Um, and I'm just going to put it on my clothes to de-stick it a bit. And I don't want it to go on my area here. So we'll just stick that down. And now you, if you wanted to take the time, you could actually uh, put mask on. And let it dry. But I'd, it's too hard doing that on stream. So we'll just do this. this here I'm just covering my leaves Sorry, this tape doesn't want to come off. It's hard to get off. So I'm just going to put it around the edge here just to mask it. So I don't end up putting the stencil over those areas. Like that. Okay, now I can take uh, my stencil, place it the way I want it. Um, I think I'll do it like that. And then I got a sponge here and just gonna take, well, what color do I want it to? I think I'm going to do black, a dark color. 
Um, let's see what I got black. If I have a black here. Nope, not in there. I know I have a black. Just hold on. No. It's real hard to get a really deep black. You have to have a lot of pigment. So I'm just going to use a black watercolor that I have here. Um, let's see if I can find it. Nope, that's not it. Where is it? Is it this one? I don't have the, wait a minute, yes I do, it is Lamp Black by M. Graham. So I'm just going to put some water on it, so it gets nice and juicy, and I'm going to just put a bunch on my palette here. I'm just going to put it on here. My sponge. And let's see what happens. So I can still go over. Let's see. Yeah, it worked. Not bad. Hi, Devin. Oh, <laughs> yeah. That was a stamp I have. He is cute. Okay, so let's dry that up. used your stamp you gave me. I love those. Used it with a sponge with watercolor. Worked cool. You just have to be careful when you're taking off tape because I use the um, heat gun, it softened it up so it's not gonna. Now there's a little bit that went past, but I can fix that easily. So, there, see. And we can go around it with black if you want it more defined. Now I'm going to get out my um, Zig watercolor brushes. And see if I got a yellow I can use. I have a couple here. And I'm going to make some lines in this one here. So I'm going to take a stiffer brush. And we'll start off with the lighter one here. And I'm just going to go uh, follow down the um, side of the 
cup. So it's on a bit of a curve. And I'm just going to go try and keep them evenly spaced. Now they would be a little closer as you're going um, around the side of your cup. And this is just a, a damp brush. And I'm just kind of um, softening the edge bit. Now as you go around, it gets straighter. So this cup's on an angle, so um, it would be straighter there, a little bit wider. And then I just take my brush and soften it up a bit. So that gives the indication that there's lines. Now I want to take, um, let's try this one, a little bit darker. Where did I just put it? Okay, I can, oh, I don't have it in my hand. <laughs> oh, gosh, I just lost, oh, there it is. Now this is wet, so it's going to run a little bit, but that's fine. It's a little bit darker on the inside here. And I'm just going to go along the edge here a little bit. Because this is still wet, it's just going to slowly seep into the paper. But you can help it along with a, a damp brush. Now, if you're using watercolor paper, it's much easier. And there's a lip on this, so I just want to put a very thin line along that lip. And do the same thing. Ah! Now along the, um, just at the very tops where those darker yellow parts were, I'm just going to add a little bit of a V in going down those yellow marks. And that will be the shadow. And these um, It'll show that the cup is ridged. So the lighter parts will be um, raised. That gives you a 3D look. And you remember my um, paper is still wet. You can just very, very... Um, Carefully put a, a very fine line up. It just gives it a, a little bit more detail. And I want to do the same with the handle. 
So it would be a little bit more darker around the bottom and the inside of the cup handle. And you can just take your brush again, go around the edge, let it seep. And it will give you a little bit more Joan. And just, I'm going to put a little bit along the edge here. Very fine. That's what I like about these clean brush, Zig clean brush. It's just, they have a beautiful point on them. All right, so there's that one. Um, I want to do something with a design of some sort on that. I'm thinking possibly... Um, maybe a square of some sort. There's this here. I'm just thinking of, um, I want to do maybe, oh, here, with this one. This might work. Now, or am I making myself crazy? Maybe I'll do it with pen. Yeah, I'm going to do it with pen, but This one needs to be done, so we could do that one. Maybe with green, since it's a boat. Should I do green? Hmm. We could do polka dots or. something swirly. Oh, here's, I can use those. That'd be cute. Swirls on the, let's see. Yeah, we could do that. And with a pencil, I think. Green. Or maybe we'll try. Let's see what color green I have here. Let's try this one. Do I want green? No, why not? Hmm. No, I think I'm going to do, I think that's going to be too difficult. You want a fairly small, I could do lettering. Let's see what we got here. Or that. Have some letters here and a heart. Maybe just a heart.
see. Um, green. I'm <laughs> I'm not sure what I want to do here. What should I do? Or stamp. Maybe I'll just do What do you think, guys? What should I do? This here could use this to my advantage. Like that. And just put a yeah, that's what I'll do. Now where did I put my tape? Oh, there it is. I was thinking polka dots, yeah cute. I could do green with um, black trim on them. Oh, I hate this tape. So frustrating. Let's see. I don't want that to be... I'm going to put it on my pants so it doesn't rip it. here and that on there and then I don't think I'll go past this but I'll put it down anyways all right we'll use this to our advantage and do the polka dots actually Let's wipe it just in case you never know what I was using okay nothing came off <laughs> yeah like that and then my green okay oh, I need more green so I'm just putting it on my brush or my stamp thing <laughs> and then just go on there Let's see how it works ah oh well See if we can take it off. No, no, it's paint. So, how do we fix it? We take our green and we make it all green, and then we'll make dots. Okay, now let's dry it.
Yeah, we can fix that up. That's no problem. Some, some gouache will fix that right up. But I want to put this back on. And take a fine pen. This is, that's a five. Let's see what else I got here. Number five. There's a one. And just go over. And make your dots. Now you can fill them in, or maybe I, I might fill them in. Maybe put one there. Now I can take a brush. And if I have one in here, or or just take it here. You could do it with pen too if you wanted to. And then we'll put the shine over top of all of this. That will give it dimension. Now this um, stencil was it's kind of random circles, but they're not perfect circles. So <laughs> those are great stencils because then you don't have to worry about um, getting them the exact shape. And I like them. It gives them character when they're not exact, I find anyways. I don't mind them if they're a little on the wonky side. gives it a little bit of character. That. Hey Ruth. 
Uh, is there a printable? Uh, I don't have one ready, but I can put it up for if you if you guys want them. Would you like one? That's no trouble. I think I'm going to put a black handle on this one. That way I can get rid of those hoo-boos. And I, I can still put in a white area, um, a shine with some gouache. That's cute. And I think I'm going to put maybe gold in this too. Maybe the rims will be done in gold. That would look kind of cool. All right. So I'm going to put a little bit of, of um, shadow. So I'm going to take some of this dark green again that I have here, but uh, watered down, and then I'm just going to go under the rim here. Just to darken that up slightly. And then right around here, the edge. And then just take your a damp brush and then just uh, bring that out a little bit. And do the same thing for this part along the edge of this one because it's sitting in this cup. There'll be a little bit of a shadow in there. That doesn't have to be a whole lot. And then I think I'm just thinking here. This needs to have some black. So I'm going to make a little bit more. What was that again? Of that, this black here. So that was the uh, umber and the ultramarine mix. I'm just going to. Continue it down a little bit. Make up a pattern. So that it looks cohesive. Like that. And just darken the edge a little bit. I'm going to go over that pattern.
just a little bit of that color in here just to show that there's some shadow in here. And along the side here, just a bit. All right. All right, so now we can um, do a little bit more um, detail. Now you can do detail with more watercolor or you can do detail with pen work. So let's take out a pen. Now I had that there, the number, it was a one. So it's a fairly fine point. I'll bring you guys in so you can see what I'm doing. And I'm just going to be defining some of these areas where the shadows would be mostly. Um, so I don't necessarily do the whole thing because your, your mind's eye will connect those itself. So sometimes you don't need to put the, the all the way around like a, a contoured edge. And I like using fairly thin, um, small, fine points on mine. I just find that they're... Mm, I find if it's too heavy a line, it kind of distracts the eye. So I like um, a finer line, but you may like a, uh, a fairly thick line. It's all preference, really. So you just have to um, play with your sketchbook, see what um, calls to you, basically. So put this there. Let's see if that goes like that in between. So we're just seeing the edge of your um, plate. Then I can put actually some more lines in those stems. Add more in if you want. And then this this thing here is the um, flower head of the uh, clover leaf 
or clover uh, flower, you know, the four leaf clover flowers. So they're kind of um, spiky, I guess you could say. So I'm putting the negative shadowed areas in. So I'm seeing the center uh, of these flowers as the darkest areas that you'll kind of see through the plant. And then I'll add a bunch of um, highlights on it also. So you'll, it'll look, it, it'll make sense after I put the highlights on. Sometimes when you're doing this type of work, uh, it doesn't look right until you start seeing highlights or shadows on some of these things. All right. Uh, let's see. Put more of a lip on here. Now I might I might uh, just put more color behind here after I finish the line work. We'll see what it looks like first with the line work. Sometimes you don't need it. Sometimes you do. This here needs to be darker. Comes Chloe. So I'm just putting a few of these in. That's part of the stem here. more or less just separating where they are. You don't have to do the total outline. And I'm just going to put one, one of the flowers in here hanging down. So they're kind of a white, funny looking flower.
So just play with it. And then these little guys. Um, I'm just kind of giving an idea where they're at. They're not the exact shape, but just a, an idea, I guess. Your mind's eye will fill in what they are. And maybe we'll put some bees in. We'll see. Bees are cute. And there's a little bit of flower in there. Make sure they're not all like three petals that you're seeing because you're going to be seeing uh, side views, um, overlapping, that type of thing. So don't forget to do stuff like that. So it's more interesting. That. So I'm basically just um, trim, like tracing around objects of color for some of these leaves. Thanks, Lori. So let's put let's put a few more, a couple more um, flowers in here. They're kind of funny looking. Maybe a bee there or here. I don't know. Maybe there and I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> it's fun. Just have fun with it. That's the main thing. I'm just putting some arches in some of these areas here just to show that they're um, 3D, basically. Maybe a little bit in the crease that they would have. Just to give them a little bit more texture. Depends how much you want to play with it. I'm going to put some highlights on with some gouache too. I 
think I'll do black rim maybe. Um, or where was that? One I just found. Where was it? That one with the squares on. Oh, here it is. Mm, it'd have to be. No, I'd have to draw it. Maybe I can draw it. Let's see. Do it with a pencil first would be a good idea. So I could do... So rim... This way. So that would be or just a B on there would be cute too. Maybe that's what we'll do. So let's put gold paint so get my gold paint out a nice deep gold and let that sit for a minute so it softens up but I do want a shadow underneath the the um the cup and the flowers. Like this. Can even draw some um, stems in too. And a little darker along the edge of the saucer. Just a smidge in there. So it would be darker because of the um, shadowed areas. Uh, I think I'm going to Make it a little darker under here. Like that. some of that water out a little bit much. I want it thick. So then I can just then let's go around the edge of the cup. So it looks like it's um, gold. And around the rim of the saucer. Like that. And then I think I'm going to do this one too.
and the green. Much. Oh. <laughs> oh well. I can put some, let's get another baby wipe, see if I can get that up. Nope, I'll have to white it out. I could put a other leaf there. <laughs> Make things work. These, this is why I like using scrapbooks or not scrapbooks, um, sketchbooks is for when you goof up stuff too. Okay, so put an extra leaf in there. Sure, why not? I always use another leaf. And then we'll just uh, put a little bit more in the centers. Ah. I'm going to fill in some darker areas in here, I think, just a bit. It doesn't have to... Um, look like a leaf or anything it could be just parts of leaves so but if it's darker then it looks like the background and you can leave white a little bit of white space So just uh, kind of fill in a little bit around those brighter green ones to kind of make it look like there's more thickness to these. You can make a few rounder ones if you want so they kind of look like leaves. That's fine. It would be darker in here. I'm going to 
put a little bit of green in there. And right in here. That. And maybe a little more thickness of green in there. A little more dark. I think. A few dark areas. Now you will see bits of the plate underneath, so you don't have to put it all dark in there. And there are flowers in there too, so Okay, and let's dry it and then put some highlights in. Thanks, Lisa. Hey, Dar. Right there. <laughs> yeah, the gold just finishes it, I think. Okay, we'll separate that leaf now, the boo-boo <laughs> that we did. So we can get some wash out. Let's see. Where did I put that? Oh, there it is. So this is poster color. And I like to use something fairly small. Uh, I don't like to use my uh, watercolor brushes though. So see if you can find something uh, synthetic. Just, uh, just in case, some of these are acrylic. So you don't want to mess up your So any highlight would be on the um, teacup. You would even have a highlight on the gold. So um, just, let's see. I want some fairly watery, not too thick. And we'll just just a bit lightly.
kind of dot. This, no, I'll just put a little bit, not much. And around the edge here, you'd have just a bit here and there, not much. The gold will um, have the, the show. I have a little bit of highlight on some of these uh, areas that were sticking up out, the lighter areas. I just put a little bit. Don't need a lot. Like that. Um. Draw it kind of right here. A little bit lighter, a few lines. And maybe in here. Not that noticeable, but here you could just take the your brush and swipe it down just a bit, so it's, it kind of looks shiny. And then a little bit of a brighter. spot. the smidge like and now we could put a little bit on our I want it fairly watery but um, on our clovers and the I'm hoping the if it's watery enough, the watercolor will seep into it and just lighten it slightly. So I want to just do a few little lines. Kind of goes in a circle from that darker um, area. Just some dots in the center. You don't want lines in the center because that's where you're looking into. It's at your focal point right there. So a few lines 
on the outer edges are more lines and then as you go in towards that darker section your lines get shorter and dots like that I think I need a little bit more shadow in here Right, and then I'm going to put a little bit of that gray in here. And just do the bottom part of that white, just a smidge, not much, just to darken it so it looks like it's flower. That. Oh, I should put it. A little bit on there too. Um, let's see. Right on here. Just a smidge. That uh, highlight. Okay. And then I want. Um, I wonder if I have a B small enough for there. Let's see. Let me see what I got. Oh, I have this little B. Will that be big enough? I think it look too big. Maybe just a number or something, or a word. Or, no, leaf, I haven't got a leaf small enough, I don't think. Let's see, I have a bunch of this and that <laughs> that I haven't put away yet. Let's see what I got here. Well, let's get that. That's kind of cute. Like that. Um, let's see. Joy. That's too big. Christmas stuff. Leaves. Those are too big. Um, that's cute. Little steampunk bird. <laughs> Letters. There's a little leaf part. I could use part of it. That would be dark, though. Or that. 
Um, or could draw a bee, I guess. Could. If I really have to. <laughs> Christmas. I might have to draw something, guys. A little bee or something. What? What is the flower in the top cup, Kathy? That's a shamrock. I could just put this part of this on. Or should I draw B? I think I'm going to draw B. So we'll just draw this B here, smaller. So we have a little, so we'll have, let's draw the biggest part, which is his lower body right here. And then And then his wings. Go like that. And then his little legs. Go like that. Sorry about the barking. It's Coco, she's the happy one. And then a little legs here. And then the That. Just a bunch of veins. And then we'll just put them in um, just do them in um, ink. Sometimes it's just easier to draw something than go and hunt for it. <laughs> and it's a good practice too. foot here. Be, be a heart word, T. <laughs> what is, 
Um, kind of looks like it's a real bee on the clover or on the Oh well. Okay, so there's our you could have put this bee here too. Um or here. Yeah. All right, so then I was thinking I have these and that would work right there. So these are laser prints that I did on my printer. I reversed them. And this is sticker paper. You know the sticker waste that you get when you peel your stickers off? It's got a shiny surface to it. If you print on that with your laser printer, it, you will get this. And then all you have to do is get some matte medium or glue would work too. Um, let's see, matte medium. I got some matte medium here. And just put some matte medium down on your paper. So, brush here. So I'm going to just put it right here. And then you take your... And because I've reversed it, it'll go on the proper way. And then you can just place it down the way you want. Like that. Take something to burnish it with. Rub it. And let it dry there. Just make sure you've really stuck it down. And it should come up. Uh, I just got... The... Um, what's, I think mine's a brother. I don't think it really matters, Dot, depending on what you want to do with it. I hope it's going to work. It's got to dry yet. You do need a, a fairly good coat of matte medium. Uh, me too, Dot, but I can't convince the hubby. Oh, really? <laughs> Mm, didn't come up as good as I wanted. I, I don't think I had enough um, matte medium on it. Let me see if I can put more down without. Disturbing it too much. Okay. I'm going to leave it and see what happens. Uh, <laughs> shall you nag him? <laughs> hey, Jen. Um, I've done this before in, um, actually it was in my folder one with acrylic paint. That I did it. 
in this one. Yeah, here. That's the one I did with the acrylic paint. So it's nice because then you can type out any font you want, any word you want, and um, use it. I'll show you another thing I used it on was... Now you have to make sure you have a good... Uh, you put it on best quality because if it's not best, it, it um, kind of goes on blotchy on your sheet. I think I put it in here. Maybe not. It's the other one. No, it's not this one. Hmm. I don't remember what I had another one that I did it in. What book was it? Hmm. I don't remember. If I find it, I'll show it to you next time. Let's draw, see if we can dry that. Not bad, but see, it comes completely off. You can actually reuse these papers again if you don't cut them up. I could take a either a light green or a white. Let's try this light green and put a little bit of well, that's not light enough. Mm, need a white. Close to white. Let's see what this one is. Nope. Well, not bad. Maybe this one. Just a little bit of highlight in some of these. It doesn't really show a whole lot, but well, where did I put my white? Mm. Oh, there it is. A little bit of white here and there, just to show a little bit of shine. Doesn't have to be a lot. Like that. Just here and there. There. Do I have a 16 on here? I should put March 16th. Right there. I 
Okay, well, got the glue. Put en enough on it. Um, you might even try gel medium, matte, like um, a gel instead of a fluid might work better. Let's see, where did I put it? How do I put it? I'll put it right here. Or right here. I think right here. Like that. Move it. For Val or Valentine's, St. <laughs> Patrick's Day. Make sure it's good and dry. Hopefully this one worked. Yep. And then just dry it, and then you can touch it up if you need to. Yeah, so just take out a marker. Where did I put it? Touch it up. It didn't come out the best. This one could use a little bit. I'm just basically filling in any areas that are kind of iffy. That. Okay. 
No, I think I'm going to just go around some of these here. Just, just to spruce them up a little bit. Some of them are kind of blurred, but you don't have to do them. If you, if you like it the way it is, leave it. All right, I think that's it. So today is the 15th, but yeah, just play, play with your stuff. See what you can make out of it. Have some fun with it. Do it in a scrapbook or an art journal or sketchbook. Whatever you have. Because there's no... It's not precious. It's, um, it's an area where you can play, experiment, test things out. And just have some fun. Oh, that gold paint. Yeah, isn't that nice? Um, I love gold and green. I think it turned out cute. So I hope you'll give it a try. See what you guys can do. And uh, we'll see you on Thursday. And we'll be doing uh, probably some mixed media. I'm thinking houses for some reason. I think because I was watching Lena. <laughs> you were doing some uh, urban sketching. Oh, you think so? <laughs> yeah, I like it. It's cute. All right. Well, I'll let you guys go. And you have a fantastic day. And get your sketchbooks out. And do some drawing or painting or whatever. Just have some fun. Be creative. All right. Bye for now.